Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Storm coming at you from Team Shadow Strike. Um, it is time for another top 10 list of Pokemon. We are now on Generation 4. I have been doing top 10 lists for all my favorite Pokemon from each generation, so make sure you go check out the first three. Excuse me, where I do my first 10 from Kano, my first 10 from Johto, and my first 10 from favorite 10 from Ho-Oh, from Ho-Oh, from Hoenn. <laughs> wow. And now I'm going to do my top 10 from Generation 4 from the Sinnoh region. Now the Sinnoh region... I'll admit, Diamond and Pearl was probably not the best. I personally like Platinum best, and I think that's the general consensus, is that people enjoyed out of those three games, they enjoyed Platinum the most. Um, but it still had a pretty cool storyline, I will admit. Um, I, I just... it. I'm sorry out of the... On this top ten list, there is none of the starters. I thought the starters from Generation 4 were complete crap. Um, Turtwig, I just, I don't know. I mean, a turtle with a giant tree on his back. It kind of looked like a island turtle from Yu-Gi-Oh, if you get that reference. It, um, another fire-fighting Pokemon. They, they basically took Blaziken and made a retarded version. You know, I, I don't like Infernape. I don't like looking at him. He just looks stupid. Um... I started with Piplup every single time because Empoleon was the only one I could stomach because he looked at least halfway cool. Um, but even still, I really wasn't pleased with Empoleon. What happened a lot of times is I just tried to find a way to get another starter from another generation on the game just because I just didn't like them. Um, but if I had to pick one of those three, I always started with Piplup. And I am dead serious, guys. I have never raised an Infernape or a Torterra. I never have. I never will. Um, I have one for each of my Pokedexes, but I will not raise them. I refuse to. So I'm going to jump straight into this top 10 list. Um, so as always, guys, um, fair reminder, there are no legendaries on this list. If you want to see my top 10 picks for legendaries, that will be after I get through gen um, Generation 6, where I will be giving you my top 10 list of legendary Pokemon and my top 10 Mega Pokemon. So, And the top 10 Mega Pokemon will also include the Megas that we are getting announced now. Um, and um, keep in mind, guys, if you keep up with my channel in December for my monthly giveaways, I will be giving away a um, for that giveaway if you win um, the contest, which I don't know what it is going to be exactly quite yet. But if you do win that month, that month, that month's giveaway, you will be able to tell me which of the Pokemon games you want, meaning the new ones that come out in November, Ruby and Sapphire. And if you win, you will win a. Um, a free brand new copy still in original sealing of Ruby or Sapphire I will ship it to you and it's yours to do with whatever you want so if you do um, if you are new to my channel please go and subscribe and uh, check out all the content between now and December but um, I'm really looking forward to doing that for you guys um, if you're interested my September monthly giveaway is going on right now so if you want to be a part of that you can go check out the video for that um, so Let's jump straight into this top 10 list, guys. So number 10 um, is Miss Magius. Now, I was never a big fan of Mistrivus, um, but I was a fan of Miss Magius because I caught a, I caught a Mistrivus, I think, like one of my first two or three times playing through the game. And when I came across the Dusk Stone, I decided to go to see if any of my Pokemon there knew it because I didn't buy the the uh, stone and when I was younger I really didn't you know investigate you know the newer Pokemon that were coming out and I was like wait mystery of this can evolve with a dust stone hmm, okay and I used that stone and I just loved how Miss Magius looked um, I've always liked ghost Pokemon and Miss Magius was pretty cool um, but you know number 10 on this list it's not a Pokemon that I use even anymore today but it, it, it was pretty cool Number nine, Electivere. This was one of the things that I really hated from Diamond and Pearl. Six Pokemon from Generation got a evolution. Lickitung, Tangela, Tan Tangela, Tangela, however the fuck you say it, Electabuzz, Magmordar, Rhyperior, and then there was one other one. I just can't think of it. <laughs> um, the only two out of this that I liked was Electivere and Magmortar. Um, those were the only two that I could really take. Um, it seemed like Diamond and Pearl, they, it was a lot of just extra evolutions from past Pokemon, and I didn't really like that. Um, now, there was a couple that I was okay with, obviously, as you'll see from this list, but it, it's like they did so much of that 
to cover up not having to make new Pokemon. It's like that there was they were like, okay, we need to come up with new Pokemon for Diamond and Pearl, and well, this is all we have. Well, we wanted to have this many Pokemon, and we have like 20 slots. Well, just pick some Pokemon and give them a second stage, you know, and I just, I wish they would have just came up with new Pokemon, but, you know, as much as, you know, you can poke fun at the Sinnoh region, there are some cool Pokemon from it that are really good, but, um, Electivere, out of all of them, I think is the best, that he is probably, he's seen the most in competitive battling, maybe Magmordar, you know, but Electivere is pretty badass if you train him properly. Not that I'm saying that those others can't, I just... And plus, who the fuck would want a Tangela anyway? It looks ugly. <laughs> Number 8, Frostlass. I'm, I was never a big fan of Glolly, but when I saw Frostlass, I was like, wait a minute. I've always loved Ice Pokemon, and I've always loved Ghost Pokemon. So you're going to give me a Ghost Ice Pokemon? I mean, that was like heaven for me. And Frostlass looked just so freaking cool. Um, I, I enjoyed Frostlass, I had a lot of fun with it, um, con seeing how it was always gonna have to be a female to evolve into Frostlass, um, I really enjoyed it because I always taught mine Attract, and it seemed like in the Sinnoh region, when you used Attract, like, 95% of the time, the opponent could not hit you, no matter what. Um, so Frostlass was like, Frostlass from Sinnoh region was like one of the troll Pokemon. Um, but... I actually have a I'm actually training a Frostlass for my X and Y teams. Um, I just free I've always loved Frostlass. Um, it is a very good Pokemon when you train it properly, and with its new ability, Cursed Body, it is pretty evil. Um, number seven, Glaceon. And Sinnoh region, we got two new evolutions. We got Glaceon and we got Leafeon. I was never that crazy about Leafeon, even though I will admit I have raised a Leafeon and used a Leafeon before on a Sunny Day team. And I will admit he does definitely have his uses, but out of the two of from this generation, Glaceon is my favorite. Um, even though Glaceon really isn't that special, you can use it as a special sweeper. You can use it on an ice team. I, you know, I mean, if there is such a thing. I mean, I've built a rain dance team. I've built a sunny day team, but I've never built a ice team. Um, that might be something fun to try. I might try and do that. Um, but you know, hit it. Glaceon was cool. You know, I mean, I think it's always cool to see what they do with Eevee because Eevee is like one of the classic Pokemon, you know, it'll always be one of the favorites, um, and Generation 6, everyone was so happy to see that we got another Eevee evolution, I hope that we see more in the future, um, number 6, Luxray, pretty much, they took Mana Trick from the Hoenn region and made it more badass, that's pretty much the only difference between Mana Trick and, uh, Luxray, but I like how Luxray looks more, Luxray looks like, it's like, a, a lion, almost, I mean, he is just, awesome um i i remember when i i caught a shinx the first time and i i think i played diamond first um if i'm remembering correct. I, yes i played diamond first um i remember catching a shinx you know because you could catch them like in the very 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 beginning of the game and they were really slow to evolve into freaking luxio but then when it got to luxio at level 20 it evolved 10 levels later into Luxray, and Luxray is freaking evil. Um, you basically just get one of these things. You can, I would recommend honestly, a timid one, and then you basically super train that bitch in speed and attack, and just use wild discharge. That a wild discharging Luxray with an IV in attack, perfect IV in attack, is literally almost e un not fair. However, electric Pokemon. They're not exactly the best to have on teams. It's a, what's more common is it seems now that people just have an attack that ha, a Pokemon that knows an electric attack, or they have another way to you to get around their type uh, weaknesses besides electric. But if I was gonna you know pick you know favorite electric Pokemon, Luxray would definitely be up on the top of that list. Um, but Luxray definitely, uh, if you were gonna do a top ten list from Sinnoh, I think he would be on just about everybody's list. Um, number five. Toxic Croak. I'm sorry. I like Toxic Croak. This thing. Whenever I saw Croagunk, I was like, you know, I've never raised a poison Pokemon, you know, up to that point, besides Gliger. And 
you know, I mean, I mean, not Gligar, um, actually, no, I never raised a poison Pokemon up to that point for competitive reasons. Um, I was, I'm sorry, I was considered Gligar poison because he always knows poison attacks with me, but anywho, Toxicroak was probably the first major poison Pokemon that I used. Um, I enjoyed it at first, and then when he evolved into Toxicroak, he just looked so badass. Um, and plus, shiny Toxicroaks, they're, I don't, if you've never seen a shiny Toxicroak, they're pretty badass. Um, I had fun with Toxicroak, you know, and I still think he's probably one of the best Pokemon out there if you're looking for fighting Pokemon. And if you're looking for a good Pokemon that, with poison that can just be a monstrous attacker, then Toxicroak is definitely your guy for the new, to take out fairy Pokemon. Um, but Toxicroak, um, I had a, I've, I've um, raised quite a few of them, and I just enjoy the Pokemon in general because he does have a pretty wide open pool, and can if when used effectively, he is pretty frickin' evil. Um, going into number four, Gallade. Now, I was never the biggest fan of Gardevoir, but when I saw Gallade, it it it, it was it basically looked like a psychic version of Scyther, um, because his arms literally became blade forms, you know, and Gallade is by far one of the best Pokemon there is, you know, if you can, you pretty much just get one that's either jolly or adamant, you give it a life orb, and you just watch it sweep teams, um, maybe go swords dance first turn, and it is amazing what this freaking thing can do, I mean, psycho cut on this thing after a swords dance while holding a life orb should be illegal, um, but anyway, Gallade by far, guys, if you're going to make a top 10 list from Sinnoh and you don't put Gallade on there, there's a problem. Number three, Garchomp. Every generation has that OP dragon type, um, from set, from generation three, it was Salamence, um, and I also think Flygon's pretty OP, but that's my opinion. Um, you know, and then later we saw Haxorus, you know, I mean, then we saw Hydreigon, but Garchomp definitely is one of the better ones. Garchomp is, guys, it is a dragon, but it's also part shark. How much cooler can you get? It's, it, it, it was definitely different because it was a ground dragon, so obviously it can't fly. Um, even though I never understood that. Garchomp has these huge fucking wings, you know, that if it just, it probably could get off the ground. Um, but just looking at Garchomp, and then Garchomp got a Mega Evolution, even though I will say Mega Garchomp, I was very disappointed because a shiny Garchomp, if you then Mega Evolve him, he looks like Barney the fucking dinosaur as a dragon, and it's pretty fucking lame, but Garchomp still is one of the best dragons out there. If you're looking for a dragon to stick on your team, literally to just sweep Pokemon, Garchomp is a pretty safe bet. I personally like Haxorus better, but Garchomp is still a safe bet. Um, I I uh, made a complete dragon team once, and my opening set was Garchomp and Haxorus, and it's like, good luck. Um, number two, Gliscor, it, it, which is pretty weird, because if you go back to my Johto list, I believe Gligar was my number two, um, I believe. Um, I don't remember, though. If you're really that interested, you'd have to go look yourself, but... Gliscor, guys, <laughs> he, it, when I saw Gliscor, I, I just, because Gligar kind of fell out of my competitive Pokemon, you know, as Johto got behind us, and then Gli and then they were like, okay, we're going to take Gligar, and we're going to give him Gliscor. He gets bigger, he gets a more dark color, and he looks more evil, and he gets a bigger wide variety of attacks. He just becomes evil. Um, you can get one, my, the one that I use is um, I have an impish one and I have an adamant one. You pretty much just give this thing a toxic orb, make sure it's hat more, make sure it will have it, make sure that it has its hidden ability toxic heal, and give it substitute and just watch your opponent rage. It is hilarious. You basically throw out Gliscor, you use substitute. Nine times out of ten, most people they're going to use some sort of setup move where they use like a weather move, whether they use like a swords dance or a calm mind or a dragon dance first turn, or maybe even they do something, you know, to set to set the battle up. When you and then on the next turn you have a substitute and you've already probably almost healed everything from that substitute and you're going to get a free shot at them. Um, so Gliscor is a pretty evil Pokemon and his defense is 
his defense is insane with this. The only thing that really kills him quick, fast, and in a hurry is ice Pokemon. So if you do have a Gliscor out and your opponent throws out an ice Pokemon, make sure you either A, have an answer to it with Gliscor, so make sure he's equipped with some sort of a fighting attack, or you withdraw him immediately. Um, but if you've never raised a Gliscor, I definitely encourage you to. Um, it is something that you will not regret. Um, my Gliscor on my X and Y team, I have swept people with this thing. He is so evil. Um, and my number one Pokemon. If you know me, you should know what my favorite Pokemon is from Sinnoh. Because it's also my favorite Pokemon, period. And that is Lucario. I'm trying to find a reason not to put Lucario at number one on this list, um, <laughs> and I can't do it. He he is a he is a fighting steel type. He is basically a Nubus in Pokemon form. He can speak to humans using Aura. He has one of the most wide arrayed move sets out there. You raise him properly, he can pretty much do anything. You can give him any kind of move set. I have like three different Lucarios that I can use for competitive reasons. I have one that is a physical sweeper. I have one that is a special sweeper. I have one that is literally a speed and physical mix. I mean, you can do so much with Lucario. And then when he got a mega evolution, oh guys, I I almost got out of Pokemon before X and Y came out um, because before X and Y came out. I didn't have a 3DS, and then when I saw Lucario got a Mega Form, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still here, and I literally purchased my 3DS the same day I purchased um, X, because um, I purchased X and then I event, then I purchased Y uh, the following week. But um, the second I saw Mega Lucario, I'm like, okay, I'm on, I'm still here, and I'm glad I didn't bail because Pokemon now is actually a lot more fun now that I've quit Yu-Gi-Oh. But my number one Pokemon from the Sinnoh region and my favorite Pokemon of all time is Lucario. It just just is, guys. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. So in the comment section below, why don't you tell me your top 10 favorite Pokemon from Sinnoh if you don't want to give me your top 10. What was some of your favorites from the Sinnoh region? What was some of your favorites that maybe I didn't mention? So thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you um, mark your calendars for December where I will be giving away a copy of Alpha Ruby or Omega... Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. Why in the fuck did they call him that? Why don't they just call him Ruby and Sapphire? Um, so if you do want to partake in that, rem remember in December to um, check that out because I will be giving away a free copy. It, it will cost you absolutely nothing to enter. It will be coming out of my pocket from those of uh, my subscribers who are overseas. Keep in mind, it will be an English version. Um, if that's a problem, I don't know if it will be. I'm just mentioning because um, I will more than likely be purchasing it from where I work at GameStop. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. So make sure you uh, continue to check out my content where I do deck profiles for Van um, for uh, deck profiles where I do trade binders, um, discussion videos, random rants. I do a little bit of everything. And if you ever have a video suggestion, all you have to do is um, leave it down in the comment section below. My um, uh, the team's email address is all over the channel, so if you ever want to drop me an email, that is the easiest way to get a hold of me because my phone is literally always within my reach. And if you send me an email, I always respond to it as quickly as I possibly can. So thank you very much for watching again, guys. Make sure you thumbs this video up, leave some feedback in the comment section below, and subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you very much, and I'll see you all later.